I stumbled upon a super interesting plugin. It's called the Control Hub from SDL, and it's basically an all-in-one plugin with a lot of a lot of things: pre-EQ, color, dynamics in multiple shapes, uh, master EQ effects limiter. All super cool. But the thing that I'm interested in most is the tracer. So let's take a closer look. So what Tracer can do is basically mix, capture, share. It captures complete signal change from single piece of gear to complex combinations, including preamps, equalizers, compressors, limiters, and more. Whatever the more may mean. Powered by our advanced tracing technology, the Tracer can learn and replicate the sonic characteristics of any hardware or software signal chain with unrivaled accuracy. So I think they built some special technology in here in order to um, capture a, a hardware uh, chain. And I actually have a very cool application for that. Uh, I'll explain that in a minute. So how to capture gear. I think it's just a step-by-step -step process. Yeah, you basically run an audio file through your gear and then import that audio file back into STL and it will guide you all the way. I'm wondering, like, what can I trace? Capture an extensive array of professional audio equipment, preamps, equalizers, compressors, limiters, whether used individually or in intricate mixing chains. I read mastering chain here as well because basically that's the same thing. It's a chain of equipment. Moreover, it offers the flexibility to seamlessly blend hardware and software chains, allowing you to effortlessly mix and match as needed. The, the thing that they're not talking about on the website is uh, saturation uh, devices. They are saying preamps, which is of course like if you're using a preamp in this way, you're using it as saturation. They're not saying saturation and that's, you know, it's one of the things that makes analog analog. It's the saturation. I'm kind of reading here that they do support that, but in order to capture analog, uh, it has to be able to capture that bit of saturation as well. I I'm really interested in, in how this is actually working behind the scenes. I don't know. So where I can use this plugin for is uh, basically to make my life easier because uh, one of the features that my uh, mixing service has, for instance, is that mastering is always included. And I always try to include uh, the best mastering uh, on my first version, even though I will probably tweak it uh, a bit later down the road. I want the whole mastering chain to be on the first version that my client is hearing because that way they can hear what they're going to get it makes a lot of sense to do that. Uh, however, in order to do that properly, I like to do that on the analog gear. And that first of all means uh, real-time exporting. I cannot export tracks uh, faster than real-time because uh, you cannot do that with analog. And secondly, uh, that also means that if I'm going to tweak the mix for the client uh, later down the line, I need to be able to recall the settings. And what I do now is just take a picture of the settings. As you can see here, the West Audio, of course, uh, recalls itself. It's a really cool piece of equipment, uh, but the Dictator and the Empress in this shot, and also the new G-Bus that I was using on this particular master, that doesn't recall itself. I have to recall that. A plugin like this can bring me two things, quicker recallability, or basically no recallability because I can then just capture the signal chain, and faster than real-time exporting for uh, future versions. However, I'm super skeptical with these type of things because it's been 25 years or something since we've started to emulate analog equipment. And still a lot of companies aren't fully able to grab that analog magic. So now all of a sudden having a plugin that is capable of doing that all, that's claimed to have unrivaled Accuracy. I mean, the snake oil radar starts to beep now. I just want to want to test this first, do some testing together with all of you. And in order to do that, I, I just want to start with the exact application um, that I want to use this for, because, you know, that, that's the, the most extensive way of testing it because it's already uh, going to be pretty complex. So uh, what I want to do first is quickly set up uh, my master chain. This is the chain that I've patched. We're starting with the Empress, then we're going into the West Audio, and then we're going into the GainLab uh, 
dictator. I've made this chain uh, for multiple uh, reasons. And the first one is basically just because it's easy to capture uh, on camera like this. But this is not always my default mastering chain. I sometimes include the SSL over here. I've got an uh, Expressor Neo over here. And it really depends on what is going on. Sometimes I even use the tape machine. Um, but anyway, I think this is going to be very interesting. So uh, let's first just create a, a preset. So I've got a track over here uh, that is definitely not called Sandstorm by the Root, um, but I don't know what it is called. Uh, if anybody knows, leave it in the comments down below. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some settings that don't necessarily make sense on this music or on this track, but do make a lot of sense uh, for the testing. And this track is just going to be a vehicle uh, to easily hear uh, differences uh, later on. Let's get started. L let me explain why I'm choosing certain certain settings. First of all, what I really like about the uh, Empress is this and the Tube Boost. That's also creating a little bit of saturation, uh, which I want to test as well. And boost a bit of that low, 60 hertz, and also cut it because that gives the the real pull tech chain. So. Pull tech five, I'm sorry, pull tech five. Also some highs, and this is definitely something that this track can use. Bit of air, like that. Maybe 8K. 8K is better. And let's also use the mid band, just, just in order to use the mid band. So now we have an EQ curve on here, which is really cool. Uh, also, Wes Audio has already started to do uh, things. Uh, let's make sure that left and right is the same. So copy left to right, okay. Uh, there we go. Let's do a... Let's do quick attack and release because that's something that um, software can struggle with sometimes. Like that, okay. Uh, a bit of THD. It's analog. I mean, if, if I want to have it clean, I can do it digital as well. A little bit of iron, because uh, that's a feature that I use quite often. Like that. Cool. And then um, what I really like to do with the uh, dictator is just have that work a little bit after the chain after the rest of the chain. So at the end of the chain, a slow compressor at the end of the chain, tube compressor. So yeah, I think Yeah, I think this is the thing I want to test. It's, it's, I mean, it's not the best sound, but I think that that um, this does already involve a lot of things that I would be impressed by if this thing can be able to, to capture this. Let's see what we need to do. Complete signal chain. Locate the tracer audio file by clicking the locate button below, then import this file into your DAW. I can do that. Run the tracer audio file from your DAW, out through your desired signal chain. Yep. Import the process tracer audio file by clicking the import button. Click the trace button to begin the tracing process. Okay, that's interesting. Let's see what happens. Let's see. Let's see how it sounds. Just, just. Uh, okay, some syncing ticks. That's the sound of my home planet. So what I'm doing is I'm just sending this file through the chain and then in a new channel, which is called analog over here, analog. I'm capturing it again. Now we just have to wait three minutes. Let's see who's quicker. No, oh no, no, now I have to do it against the clock. Okay, okay. All right, tracing levels are good, imported. Okay, great, proceed. Trace stereo. Current settings will be lost, no problem. Aligning processed audio. Let's see how long this takes. Analyzing compression curve, optimizing dynamic response. Okay. You gotta take your time when you're doing this. It's almost then, then, then it's almost going to be a calculation of like, okay, is it worth the extra time to do this? Because I think it will take four or five 
minutes. I mean, I mean, an average song is three minutes already. So if you need to bounce it two times, then it's already worth it. So, hmm. okay. Grace and complete, refine your preset. Okay, refine your preset by tweaking the module parameters. But now I can listen to it already, right? All right, so here's an example of what it did. And I also recorded a bit of the analog output for easy comparison. It gets close, it gets close. Will it null? And what we hear now is that there's actually quite <laughs> a big <laughs> difference. Most of all in the low frequencies, it seems as if it's not able to capture the dynamics of that low of those low frequencies. However, if we if we just listen to it to it solo, then, I mean, gets close, but in a more complex region. Yeah, yeah. Listen to the bass line. Same part on the analog. And now. It's not the same, it's not the same. Uh, I wasn't expecting it to be the same. I mean, there's always some snake oil in these type of things. Like, anyway, um, what I want to try uh, as another test is, uh, is, is just quickly take a look at the, at the harmonics. All right, let's go back to the analog. Hmm. Okay, so it didn't really capture the harmonic information. Uh, I want to check what is happening on the low frequency. So let's go for like 60 hertz. Because I, I, heard, I heard the biggest difference there. What is also interesting is the fact that the, cur the EQ curve is different. So we've got like minus 26 on the analog and minus 27 the STL and I, I'm nitpicking a little bit but I if I'm going to use this I want this to be very precisely capable of replicating my analog gear and as I'm looking at this right now like the harmonics are just it's just different uh, also what I want to know is uh, I want to know if this thing is uh, aliasing or not so let's go to I don't know 24k really turn it up so this is the analog signal which of course isn't going to alias at all yeah, something like that and this is the STL1, which is also not going to alias, but it is higher in volume. I, I want to see how well it's able to capture a, a not so complex, pretty much linear system. So I'm going to run it through the console, um, which is a Neumann console, which isn't very uh, saturated, definitely not on the levels that I'm running it right now. And I'm going to run it through the, the W495B, uh, which are very clean, very linear EQs. So let's do that. All right, so they are over here. And let, let's see what, uh, what, what what we have on here. Let's have it 7K. Do a lot. 2K. Like that. And maybe some deep lows as well. Pretty simple curve, right? Let's see if if we can capture that. So let's run this uh, thing here again. And now we wait. All right, let's import this new trace uh, as a I think complete signal chain then, not a compressor. I think the compressor is really that 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 extra cram uh, thing that they are doing with the replication of the settings. Analyzing compression curve, optimizing dynamic response, 
I mean, I mean, there will be some dynamic. There, there will be something happening. But if it cannot simulate this, <laughs> like a simple, pretty much linear system, like no compression. Compression is like difficult. I can understand that. But EQ, simulating EQ is actually pr pretty easy nowadays. Cool. Let's save this as a, a 495 test. All right, let's listen to the differences. There is a difference again, I think. Yeah. Yeah. But... Whoa! I hope this comes across on YouTube, by the way, because... No, it's not the same. It's not the same. I want to do um, just, just because I want to figure it out. Uh, I want to uh, also just quickly grab an impulse response from these EQs. I'm going to do it by uh, sending a sweep through the equipment and then a deconvolve it and then using reverb. The, the Reaper plugin reverb um, in order to, to load that impulse response. And an impulse response is usually used to capture linear systems, uh, which this almost is. So I just want to compare which one is doing a better job. All right. STL. And the impulse response. Mm. Okay. Let's, let's do a null test on these. Let's do a null test. All right, so here's the null test, the analog versus the STL. All right, so we have low and high that it didn't capture or something. And now the analog versus the impulse response. And no, I didn't, didn't, play with the levels or something in the edit. This is literally how well, just an impulse response, not even done in the best way, nulls against analog. And this is how an advanced algorithm that has unrivaled accuracy, nulls. What? Can, can somebody uh, explain this to me in the comments? Because you know, I, I'm of course, you know, uh, uh, not, not the most intelligent uh, person on the internet when it comes to audio. I'm the first one to admit that. But this is weird. Like if it's able to capture things, it should at least, at least be at the same level as a simple impulse response that everybody can make using free software. Of course, like, if, if I'm going into a dynamic chain that I did at the beginning of this video, an impulse response is not going to cut it. And then probably control is your best alternative. But I, do, I just don't understand why it's giving me this result in a null test. Like, there's no reason why. Is there? Is there a reason why? I've always said that I don't think it's actually possible. I've always thought, and I, I still think that Analog has its place and digital has its place. And yes, digital uh, does its best to mimic analog. Uh, analog has always done its best to mimic digital. Like back in the days, they were constantly working on making cleaner and cleaner and cleaner uh, equipment and, and more accurate equipment, uh, which is something that digital really shines in doing. Like accuracy of digital uh, audio processing is just, you know, un unrivaled. <laughs> But it's just so weird that for like 20 years or something, there are new technologies coming to simulate the old stuff. And 
um, after a few years, that technology, which was the most accurate ever, and you can't hear the difference between the two and whatever, uh, all of a sudden that technology is old and old fashioned, and then they invent a new technology, package something differently, make a new picture, whatever. Like, I mean, literally make a new UI on an old algorithm. There are companies that are literally doing that, and I have actually uh, have people that worked for those companies say that to me, I just cannot use it uh, legally. It's just hearsay or whatever. There, there's no proof of that. But people have said this to me, like just to sell it again, selling as a new algorithm, saying that it's even better now or whatever. But it is, it's, I think, I think we're at the limits of current technology. And I think the, the whole plugin industry is just milking uh, us, audio engineers right now. Like that's one of the reasons why they're probably all going for subscription models as well, instead of just one-time payments, because they know that the only thing they need to do is maintain their code. They don't have to have to invent something new because they can't, I think. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Uh, I would love to hear your comments about this and also about the Tone Hub and, and your experiences as well. To be clear, it's not fitted uh, for, for my workflow right now. I'm not convinced. I have to be multiple thousands percents of convinced in order to implement something in my workflow. Like everything that I have around me and stuff just has to be super, super duper reliable and super um, stable and all this kind of stuff. So I'm not going to use, but to be clear, with complex change, it's actually getting very, very, very close to the analog. So I, I just want to put that out there just just so y'all know and i'm going to link to to stl in the description down below so you can check it out yourself and i want to hear what you think of everything there are multiple features in here there's also a shop in there so they can make even more money uh, uh with, where you can get presets and whatever just check it out link to it down below stl did reach out to me a while ago asking me to make a video about uh Control Hub, I wasn't really interested in that. Also, I didn't really understand the plugin. But when I did, I emailed them like, hey, can I test it out? Uh, and they said, yeah, yeah, no problem. We'll send you an NFR license, a reviewer's license. Uh, but I couldn't wait. So I was just running the demo in this video. They don't even know what video I'm making or whatever. They have no saying in this video. And everything that I'm saying in this video is completely unbiased. And I I've also done my utmost best to give the best view, most unbiased view of what is going on here. Again. If you've spotted any mistakes, uh, leave a comment down below and I'll uh, I'll address it and uh, keep that in mind for the next video. But as far as I know, this comparison was as accurate as possible. Now, if you appreciate my uh, honesty, independence and whatever, uh, make sure to check out my affiliate links. Uh, they will be in the description down below. I'll also link them uh, over here and over here. And uh, when you use my affiliate link when buying your next hardware or software, um, a little bit of your purchase gets kicked back to me. You're not paying anything extra and it's basically the easiest way to help the channel. Another way to support me is by becoming a channel member and uh, as a channel member you get access to uh, some extra content. I'll link a playlist of that over here. Last way to support me and the whole YouTube platform basically is by staying on it and not going away. Link an interesting video over here. Thanks a lot for watching. Keep pushing and bye bye.